There she is right here, folks. Oh, 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 oh. That's the beast. That's the beast right there. So recently I did a little shoot where it was my first time using this Ivascope 1.5 times anamorphic lens. All right, folks, we are doing a little couple scenes today for some actor friends of mine. I'm gonna shoot a, some little clips for actor reels, demo reels, you know, you understand for pilot season coming up, so. You might remember this location from the For the Love of God pilot. Yeah, that door is going to get lost. Maybe I'll stay on the 18. Oh yeah, we're going to lose the window there. So I do see the blinds, mainly just for like the opening, very quick opening establishing, you know. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hot damn. Look, and what is that set on? It's only on 40%. All right, let me just set up over here. We'll leave this here until we get the shot going. Okay, guys. Yeah, and this is the little setup right here. Obviously, this isn't fully rigged out. I will somewhere down the line be putting out a video showing my new rig build with the red Komodo. But today, it's all about my first impressions of the Ivascope. Now, this is not a standalone lens. It is an anamorphic adapter, but a really, really well-made one. So this is just like an extension on the lens. The lens. Well, you is know, like... well, you know, anamorphic, anamorphic lenses is always two lenses in one. Gotcha. So always. there's the base. There's the... the scope, and then there's the lens. And what makes this one so special beyond how exquisitely good it looks and performs? Seriously, you will be hard pressed to find any footage online from this Ivascope that does not look at least interesting, if not straight up gorgeous. But really what makes this Ivascope way more versatile than a lot of the other cheaper options out there right now is the fact that you can throw this in front of a huge wide variety of all kinds of different lenses and instantly make them anamorphic. And if you follow me on Instagram, at Kid Tech, then you already know that I've been using my Ivascope with vintage Minolta Raccours. Now, Ivascope did not send me this, so don't get it twisted. I researched this lens for a few months before I finally decided to make the investment. Now, if you saw my video on the Zeiss Milvises, you may be a tad confused right now. Based upon some of the messages I've been getting over on the Instagram, seems like that video kind of sent the wrong message to some people and you may be thinking that I hate vintage lenses, and that is just simply not true. I definitely do plan on doing a way more in-depth vlog on the Ivascope and my choice of the Minolta Raccours in the very, very near future, but for now, let's just put a pin in all of that. So I definitely have already been doing quite a few series of tests with the Ivascope and the Minolta on the Red Komodo in 6K. Uh, I put out a video of some of those very early tests. There'll be a link down in the description below if you missed that. And I have a couple more shoots within this month of using the Ivascope on the Red Komodo, so I want to hold off on my full in-depth vlog review until after those shoots. But for now, I do want to share some of my first impressions uh, and experiences of using the Ivascope for the first time in a real world shoot. Now, I use quotations real world shoot because it was a very small crew. The entire crew, including myself, was four people plus the actors. So I was the director, the cinematographer, as well as the gaffer. My buddy Ben was my first AC. My homie Matt Lill, who's also on the Dog Times Patreon. What up, Matt? He was doing a few different duties for me. He was the BTS videographer, also doing second AC duties, as well as being like a grip, helping me move some lights and flags because we shot a few different scenes that day, as well as as uh, Matt Festel was the sound op because he is a professional sound uh, operator here in Los Angeles. Now, I wanted to do a video on this because the Ivascope that I have is from the fourth generation and I did purchase it brand new from one of the most recent batches. Special shout out to Jerome from Hafka Gear out in the Netherlands for helping hook that up. Don't get it twisted. When I say hook it up, there was no freebies. There's no plugs there. It was a real transaction, a real purchase. I paid full price. It, I'm just saying that Jerome was very helpful in that process. And since my Ivascope is from the most recent fourth version, that's the whole reason of wanting to do this video because what I've been noticing on all the forums and videos and things like that in social media world is that most users are using some of the earlier versions and there's been quite a few updates to the Ivascope since then. 
The first one being that Ibiscope made some changes to the gear on the lens. I'm not too sure of what exactly was updated about it, but I do know that there were some issues with the earlier generations when it comes to the machined follow focus gear that's on the lens. I know like some reporters on the Anamorphic Shooters Facebook group uh, had said that the gear pitch was slightly off or they were having to put other follow focus gears over the actual gear. Uh, so yeah, there's just, it was overall, I guess some complications with some of those earlier versions. And even though this recent shoot that I was using the Ivoscope on was a super low budge thing, I did still, however, have a first AC, like I said earlier, and we were using the Tilta M follow focus motor with the Ivoscope and we experienced zero issues. And I actually was surprised because I get a lot of grief using that Tilta M motor with my Zeiss Milvis lenses. And that's because the Milvises tend to straight up buck the motor off of the lens. And we never had that issue with the Ivoscope. So in that regard, the Ivoscope was really pleasant to work with, smooth sailing, and I was on a dolly. So the first AC was definitely working. Now, another update, which is probably the biggest one, is the new 15 millimeter lightweight rod support system. This thing is just so simple to slide the Ivoscope forward, swap out your taking lenses, and then slide it right back into place. It's just as simple as using a map box. And as you'll see with this new bright tangerine top handle configuration I have going on here, again, we'll talk about this in the future. Uh, however, what's cool about the bright tangerine top handle is that it has a 15 millimeter rod clamp. So I can have a little shorty 15 mil rod up top for the follow focus motor. And now I have way more space down below and it's reserved primarily for the Ivoscope and my map box. And it's just one less thing to move out of the way when I'm swapping lenses. You know, honestly, it was the whole DIY aspect of anamorphic setups that steered me away from experimenting for so long. But this new fourth generation of the Ivoscope is so well designed, and especially with this new 15 millimeter LWS system, it, it does not feel like a DIY setup to me at all. And in my opinion, it's really not. I don't, I don't like to refer to this as a DIY setup because it's just so pleasant to work with. It's a solid, well-built, single-focusing anamorphic adapter that really does perform like a normal lens in terms of how you use it mechanically. I'm not talking about how it performs optically because in that regard, it definitely performs like a true uh, anamorphic lens. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that if your camera is not sitting on a standard 15 millimeter rod base plate to begin with, well, in that regard, the Ivoscope definitely isn't going to line up with your taking lens, let alone I can guarantee your matte box isn't going to line up either. So basically, if you have your camera sitting on a DIY 15 millimeter base plate system, um, you know, nothing is gonna line up properly. So what I'm saying here is that my Red Komodo sits on this eight sin 15 millimeter rod base plate with a riser plate that was all specifically made for the Red Komodo. So you need to be using something standard. So uh, anything you put on the rails is going to line up perfectly with your lens. And I just wanted to mention that because I see a lot of stuff on the forums and everything, people having complications with, uh, you know, uh, Ivoscope not lining up correctly or different situations like that. And that's the first thing that comes to my mind because I know a lot of people generally don't want to spend the extra money on a base plate system that was actually designed for their camera. So another cool update that they've made to the Ivoscope is the fact that now it's a little bit more streamlined and simple to set the alignment of the lens. And again, that's just another great feature of the new 15 millimeter LWS support because now that allows the alignment to stay snug and intact. But here's a quick little video taken of me on set demonstrating how quick and simple and easy aligning the Ivoscope really is. So you can see the monitor and everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then so you can see me shifting the flare. This is how easy it is to set the alignment on the Ivoscope. And then now I'm going to lock in the, the, the little screws here. And now we're set. And now I'm going to drop the follow focus back down. And she is ready. Right there, she's locked. I'm locking the Tilt the Max in there. Now we're ready 
to shoot. Now, the earlier versions, before they rolled out the 15 millimeter LWS, came with just this little guy. This is what used to sit on the back of the Ibiscope, and this was really primarily used so you could directly attach the taking lens to the rear of the Ibiscope. Um, but now they do still include this. Obviously, that's how I have it. Um, and that's for anybody that does just want to straight up attach their little lens directly to the Ibiscope. However, I wouldn't really recommend that. I mean, the Ibiscope weighs 700 grams. So, you know, imagine attaching that to a little tiny vintage lens. I don't know, skate at your own risk. You know what I mean? But the bigger issue with this old system was the fact that, you know, this was also where the, the taking lens attached, as well as the still kind of uh, format for aligning the Ibiscope. Well, the problem is throughout the day, and this is things that I saw reported on the Facebook forum, you know, throughout a real working day with a follow focus motor and handheld and such, you know, like a normal working day where you're shooting. And as a result of that, the alignment was reported to come loose. So it's just another reason to use that 15 millimeter LWS support system. But again, I, I think it's beautiful. I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, I, I guess maybe the only way you would want to try to attach the Ivoscope directly to the taking lens is if you're only using one lens all day long. But even still, man, that lens better be really, really strong because again, the Ivoscope weighs over 700 grams. But I cannot stop stressing how vital, in my opinion, the 15 millimeter LWS system is because it allows the Ivoscope to sit at the exact correct height against your taking lens and thus your camera sensor, but it also makes swapping lenses a breeze. I, as well as keeping that uh, alignment intact, I don't know why you wouldn't want to use the LWS. So another small update is that I guess with the fourth generation, and maybe this is the same with the third generation, the rear element on the Ivoscope now is a tad larger, which actually opens up a little bit more possibilities for taking lenses. But it still comes standard with a 52 millimeter thread on the rear. So, you know, that's completely open for anyone that wants to, you know, attach their taking lens directly to the back of the Ivoscope. So if you've been trolling me a little hard over there on Instagram, whether on my personal account at Kid Tech or my company has its own separate account with completely different content at Dog Times Productions. However, I have been sharing some BTS uh, photos and videos of the Ivoscope, obviously, because we've been working with it. And uh, you may have noticed that my setup looks a little different than most other Ivoscope setups. And that's because I have made some slight mods to it that just makes it even more efficient when swapping lenses on set. However, I'm not going to reveal that today because I'm gonna save that for my full in-depth vlog. So again, that might be a reason to tap that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you're interested in that workflow. But overall, my first impressions, of the image coming out of the Ivoscope is that it just looks so damn good. Especially considering that this shot right here was shot with a vintage Minolta Raccor, the creme de la creme of the Raccors, the 58 millimeter 1.2. However, in this shot, it was set to an F2. Now that lens is from 1970. And keep in mind that the Minolta Raccors were never really known for their sharpness. Not to mention in this shot right here, I am using a quarter digital diffusion stacked on top of a 0.5 diopter. So I think it's safe to say that the possibilities with this Ivoscope in terms of taking lenses is going to be pretty damn abundant. I mean, if you saw my first video I put out a few weeks ago on the very first test, at the end of that video, I did a little golden hour test with the uh, Minolta 58 1.2 and the amber coatings in the Ivoscope really give a nice natural quality to the flares. It looks so much better than all the other cheaper anamorphic lenses that are coming out right now. In my opinion, to me, those look like they just slapped a blue streak filter on the lens. The Ivoscope just has very natural old school flaring and the oval bokeh is just straight up delicious. But that is it for today. I'm not gonna say any more about it until after the next couple of shoots. So again, be sure to tap that subscribe button because I will be doing a full on in-depth vlog on my whole process and researching and deciding on the Ivoscope. And I'll compare it to some of the other options I was looking at, some other DIY options, as well as breaking down my choice to go with the vintage Minolta Raccours. So be sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that. 
However, if you want to get an earlier sneak peek on that and get a jump on it, or just, you know, have conversations with me on a daily basis, as well as joining conversations with a whole group of indie filmmakers from all over the world, then the Dog Times Patreon is the place to be. It is definitely the number one way to support the show. I mean, I take everyone there on a virtual behind the scenes journey. I'm talking from the very beginning, from the ground up. You know, we, we start with the job pitch, sometimes the location scout, all of the previs, the pre-production. Then we go on the job. You know, I take you with me, you know, you know, via, you know, the camera, obviously. But, you know, we go on set and you're there for the whole journey. And literally every day I spend on set, we break down on the Patreon. It's, it's a cool interactive way to support the channel and what I do here. Of course, another free way to stay connected with me, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is to just follow me on Instagram. These are my accounts right here. They are both completely separate accounts with their own exclusive content there. I share behind the scenes, uh, little sneak peeks of my rig builds, Q and A's, uh, all kinds of stuff. I post there daily, uh, stuff from my gaffer jobs as well as my cinematographer jobs. So be sure to hit me up over there as well. So I want to give a big gigantic shout out to all of my loyal Dog Times Patreon supporters and I want to give you a gigantic thank you for watching this video in its entirety. But for now, sadly, that is a wrap. Get way over here for the thumbnail. Yeah. Woo doggy. This is my uh this is my Jay Howell t-shirt. Check that out. This is custom. This is one of a kind, right? I designed this myself over at CCS.com. Uh Jay Howell. If you don't know who Jay Howell is, oh, probably couldn't even hear me, could you? Uh <laughs> Jay Howell is the original illustrator of Bob's Burgers. So that's what's up. Was that a gang was that a gang sign I just threw up? Oh my god. I hope not. Don't kill me. I do I mean that in all sincerity too. Please don't kill me. Don't kill me.